My name is Davin Sturdivant, and this AIM Learn Fast video is about how to compare multiple laps in Race Studio. So I race competition carts, and I'm also a writer for Cart Pulse, which is designed to gather information about the sport of karting and put it into an easy to find place. So when I got in touch with Roger Cadell, who's the national trainer for AIM Sport, we decided to put together some videos about how to use karting data in Race Studio. We've broken them up into these little mini vignettes, hopefully to make it easy to consume. But if you have questions about whatever we cover, just leave a comment below and we'll put it in another video. So I'm going to turn it over to Roger and take it from there. So, you know, Roger, the first thing I always do when I, you know, get a chance to take a look at my data is I'm always trying to find out places where I can be more consistent. Because you know we know mm -hmm. that the more consistent you are, the easier it is to find time and places. Um, so you know maybe what we could do is open up a test and look at a session and you just talk about kind of where to find inconsistencies in data. Like what am I looking at to figure out where I am actually being inconsistent versus just what a squiggly line is. Yeah, perfect. The, one of the things that I've always done when I work with other people on their data, because I don't know the track, you know, kind of like I don't know this track all that well, mm -hmm. but uh, mm -hmm. but I also don't know the driver very well often, and I also don't know uh, you know the cart or the or, or the vehicle. So one of the things I've one of the things I've learned to do is just by opening a test, and in this case we're going to open up a practice test from uh, the Pacific Northwest SEMA track. Yeah, open open up a test, right? And then and then look at the test and you know, we just I always start out with just a speed trace. And one of the things for consistency is by opening just multiple multiple laps of of uh, of the track and uh, of the speed trace. And and the way that I tend to open up, I, I like to open up multiple laps. You can do it in several different ways. You can come up to the laps tab and you can you can you can add a lap up there or the uh, or the other way that I tend to do it is just hover down around the tool, test laps toolbar and just double click over it. Mm. And you can add laps very quickly down there. Mm. And and for consistency, like what you were what you were talking about, and 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 a quick way to for anybody to get up to speed and find out where are the areas that are the low hanging fruit to try to work with a driver and and understand, you know, where is the driver struggling, where is the cart, you know, those kind of things. It is I've just brought up four laps. I, I'd leave the first two off. Just let the tires get warmed up and let the driver kind of get into it. Mm -hmm. This is a practice session, and so brought up four laps when the driver's hopefully up to up to speed, and then and then start taking a look at them. Mm -hmm. And uh, and what you're looking for is is areas where there's uh, inconsistencies, where there's what what I call noise, right? Just different different speeds in different areas. And if you if you kind of look at this data, and, and if we start over here at the left edge, you know, in, into into turn one at, at SEMA, you know, right there at that uh, where, where the speed tra traces all drop together, that's a braking zone. Mm -hmm. You know, the apex of the corner, apex of turn one, and then the acceleration out. And when you when we put the cursor there and, and take a look at it, and if we look up here in the right corner, you can see that there's a you know 42, two of them at 42, and two of them at 41, and those are low 41s versus high 42s. So about two miles an hour, almost two miles an hour difference. Uh, yeah. In, in that one corner alone, so you 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 ask yourself, okay, well, you know why, you know why was the you know wh why the difference is right, and and uh, and try to start to get into into the you know, the what happened, the where did it happen, and the why did it you know why did it happen, and right now the next step would be the why. You know that makes sense. I mean, turn one for this track is a very tricky corner because I mean, not only is that the very beginning of the lap, but it's one of those um, high-speed left-handers that if you get it wrong, you just carry that time loss for the rest of the for the rest of the lap. Um, so it, you know, typically you find if you are offline or have turned in too early, um, there's a retaining wall, like a, one of those plastic retaining walls that's there on the other side. And so you find yourself kind of going for the brake real quick or making a quick adjustment to just stay away from that, that, you know, would make sense why you'd see so many divots, um, especially because it's so tight. It's easy to kind of just rush in there with gusto and then go, oops. <laughs> and exactly. so that might be where you see that. And the other thing that I notice real quickly is, yeah, yeah, it certainly can be the driver's mental makeup and, and, and getting up to speed, which may even be even more so here because the two slower laps, the orange and the blue mm -hmm. in this particular case, are the two earlier laps. The orange lap was lap four, the yeah. blue lap was, was lap five, and then lap six and seven, the driver, you know, got through there very, very good and was uh, and was running along pretty darn well. So, so uh, it very well could be. So, so that's that's one area that I would uh, would study a little bit deeper as well. No, that makes sense. So, I mean, could you... I know I wouldn't maybe take this as a trend, but if you looked at maybe the laps 
as they go up because you almost say like the driver is getting more comfortable as you're following the colored lines. You can say, oh, as he's getting more comfortable, the lap time or the corner speed's coming up. So, you know, either he's figuring it out or the setup's coming to him. And so right. that's why that speed may be increasing. And, and, there's, and, and, and you're digging right where I like to go, which is we understand what happened. We OK, where? And then you're you're helping answer the why, which is exactly what your next step should be. Perfect. Mm -hmm. So then, of course, because of the exit speed there, the mid 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 corner speed, the, the exit speed it, all the way up that long straightaway like you talked about. And, and heck, we're at uh, we're at 200 feet at the apex and we're at 400, uh, 500 feet at the. You know, it's a 300 foot long straightaway, right? Mm -hmm. So, so that uh, that 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 uh, apex speed is is all critical. And then if you if you just generally look through the rest of the lap, we just looked at the first corner really quickly. The uh, the all of the spots, other than one that I can see here, that uh, they're all in the in the in the low speed apexes of corners. There's there's a corner there. There's a you know here's another one where there's a lot of speed differences. Mm -hmm. Here's a high speed corner where you know through through the middle of this guy here, you know at the 40 41 to 43 miles per hour, about mid speed of mid speed of the track. Mm -hmm. There is a there is some differences there that we might want to uh, you know chat with the driver about as well. But but the here here's one where is a perfect example of another thing that I want to make sure we understand is when you're looking for these trends and you're looking at all this data, there's one, this green lap here is very much slower than the rest, right, on this particular corner. Mm -hmm. And if you look, it's 30 miles an hour versus, you know, a high of 33.2 uh, uh, at, at the top. And if it's a single lap that's out, well, you know what, if it was following another cart, was, you know, was, uh, you know, didn't miss the corner just a touch, whatever it happens to be, don't uh, don't get too worked up about a single one being out. You're looking for the overall general trend, right? right. Yeah, that does make sense. That does make sense. Okay. And uh, so, so when you start looking at this, another big area up here, you know, in, in this in this area here, that uh, uh, the green one is quite a bit slower. But even even amongst those, the other the other laps, there is some 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 noise in the data there. Um, so you, those are some of the negative sides. The the good side was let's look at this braking zone right here. Would I want to work with this driver on this braking zone right here? You know, if, let me get the cursor out of the way, but uh, just a touch. But if you look right here, the this driver sitting the brakes at exactly the same spot, exactly. You know, every every lap and is on the brakes extremely well mm. so the uh, you know that's an area that i is not low hanging fruit i may want to help that driver get a little bit better in that braking zone but the driver is certainly being consistent and is, is happy with what he's doing at this point right that makes so, sense that makes so, sense can we go so, back yeah. one corner though because i just want to mm -hmm. take a look at something so if we go yes, um if we actually go through this complex here um let's go up just a little bit because i, I want to take a look at something up at turn eight mm -hmm. so if we can come a little forward and this is good for people to kind of see where corners are right so there's mm -hmm. there's a uh, turn seven turn there's eight is going to be where it gets that one yeah turn yeah. eight is where it goes then, red okay right yeah. starting into it right here yeah. right so this is mm -hmm. actually somewhat interesting right because turn eight is the highest speed of the course like the highest cornering forces on the course and you can see because the red the lap is here in red Right. Mm -hmm. But what I find to be kind of interesting about turn eight here is that there's a little bit of deceleration that's happening right mm -hmm. through that section mm -hmm. before we actually get onto the brakes. Exactly um, right in this area here. Yeah. So, you know, I would when I go through turn eight, traditionally, I can go through it pretty much flat if I'm on the right. If I'm on the full left side of the track and turning, I don't have mm -hmm. to decelerate that much because the mm -hmm. uh, the the apex of the corner widens out into that straightaway that's right beyond it. So, you know, it's I think it would maybe come down to a little bit of the setup of the cart that, you know, the data we're looking at. But I would almost ask the driver, how comfortable do they feel going through turn eight? Because, you know, my experience going through there is that's not really a corner you have to decelerate at. Oh, OK. And so, you know, even when you hear carts on uh, truck side when they go by, they, you know, they keep that kind of engine tone all the way through if they're doing it correctly. So that's an interesting spot to maybe just take a peek at compared to other carts. Mm -hmm. You know, see see where he's at, mm -hmm. and this is this is a this data here does happen to be junior one cart, which you know, do not have a ton of horsepower. And this, and, and we have seen sometimes this may not be even lifting. You know, this right. might be even just back binding up going through binding the corner. Up, and, yeah. and and because of the scale, we're looking at 25 to 55, so we're only looking at 30 miles an hour difference. So so mm -hmm. that drop right there, that's 52 miles an hour down to you know 50. So that's only a mile and a half. You know, yeah. mile per hour and a half so that very well could be the driver could be flat so oh, we enough. would want to check some other things and 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 double check but uh, mm -hmm. good point point. and I, I actually think that that actually brings up a good uh analysis point to look at because you know when i looked at that i instinctively said oh the line is going down he must be breaking 
right? Exactly. But then you're able to also, you know, kind of give a little bit of extra data to say, hey, that actually might not be breaking, that it might actually be just, you know, scrub, right? Yeah, just bound up. Carbon. Bound up, yeah. So yeah. that might be something that if you have a spotter or if you have maybe some onboard video, you could look at mm -hmm. and say, oh, yeah, no, I'm definitely wide open. Like, you can hear it. I'm not lifting, like, da 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 but I'm losing time here. So mm -hmm. maybe if I can find a way to change the uh, where I enter the corner, maybe that can help decrease some of that. Like get that dip to be as minimal as possible, so I can carry a little more speed in the next corner. That might be helpful because I wouldn't, Absolutely. I wouldn't, I wouldn't make a setup change based on that. You're sacrificing everywhere no. else for this one little place, right? right. But I, the, the, but with the speed trace, what we're really studying though is the um, for this little exercise is is the differences, right? And there are three times this thing drops quite a bit and there's one time that it doesn't right, right? yeah and so then what we would want to do is if, if we get into the why which is always where we want to go is why did the one not bind up as much as the other one right you know, what yeah. is he is he is he just touching the brake to, to set the nose and get the thing to turn or is he you know on and on and on right so yeah. so the uh the speed traces here are just giving us an idea of where to go to go look next and and uh it, which brings up another uh, another good point if um when you have a Micron 5 on your cart, you know, and this is a Micron 5 data, it went, there there is data in there, and there's a lot of data, and it's, and it's very good, but often what will happen is you, it will begin to get to that why you might need a little bit more information, mm -hmm. right? So so uh, it's one of those things where if you had a pedal position sensor right here, we would know, did he roll out of the throttle, or did he touch the brake, or did he go flat, and then it just bound up, you know, as it was uh, it was lateral G'd up as it was getting through the corner. So, you know, little things like that, you know, just, just things you might want to study and, and understand a little bit better, so. Yeah. No, that makes sense. That makes sense. Perfect. You know, so so the, to close this one out, the, the basic idea is is looking for areas that you can go help the driver. We're not answering a ton of whys in this particular one. We'll get into that in some of the in some of the next uh, videos we do. But in this particular case, bring up a multiples of speed traces. Start to look where there are areas of differences, and uh, and you don't want to be negative in your in your data analysis. And and, and this is Junior One data, and we have a lot of. Um, you know, coaches or parents or, or, or things like that that are helping their kids. So they're looking at data. And uh, so you look at the you look at these areas where there's room for improvement or, or understanding what you have to the next. Is it the cart or is it the driver? And then uh, but what you also want to do is, is find those good spots. And, here, you know, here's an area of just strong consistency. There's a, a very nice corner here, a little uh, section of the track where the driver is extremely consistent mm -hmm. as well, coming towards the end of the lap. Mm -hmm. You know, so you, you find those areas and then you don't study those. You study on the other ones and you work on those ones later once you uh, once you solve some of those other problems. No, so. that's, that's good. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. and as a driver, I know that I, you know, as much as I like to focus on the area of improvement, sometimes I just like a compliment. Exactly. <laughs> and so no. when someone's looking over my data, it is it is encouraging to hear like, oh, you know, you're, you're killing them in turn nine or you're killing it in turn six or you're killing it in turn four. So I know when I approach it the next time that I can just do what I've been doing. And so, you know, if we spend too much time, well, it's not like spending too much time, but, you know, if I only get the negative, then I start to overanalyze every corner because I'm like, well, he told me so many things I did wrong, maybe. <laughs> right? Where if I, he just says, you know, you're killing it here, here, and here, don't worry about it. Let's just focus on this one spot or this other spot. I can focus on just those things, and then the overall lap is generally better. Often when you're working, when I'm working with different people or you're looking at your own data, you, what you really should do is find, if, if you're looking at a graph like this, find the top three. Mm -hmm. And because uh, you, you can become overwhelmed, so uh, you know, find those top three spots. And in this case, it might be it might be turn one, it might be this 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 high speed corner right here, and and again this high this even higher speed the uh, you know three quarters of the way through the lap. Those are the three areas that we'll we'll focus on, understand why, help the driver go a little bit quicker. So, oh, so. Um, you know, that is the that is the multiple speed trace method of looking for consistency. I, I find that to be very valuable, and it's just a great place to start with your data. Everybody has a GPS speed trace, and it's a great way to uh, to start and uh, and start to dig into the what happened, where did it happen, and why did it happen. That's the end of this AIM Learn Fast video. Leave a comment below if you have any questions, or if you want us to cover another topic. Visit aimsports.com if you want to learn more about Micron products.